بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالى فرجه الشریف السلام علی الحسین و علی علی ابن الحسین و علی اولاد الحسین و علی اصحاب الحسین و رحمت الله و برکاته الحمدلله we have توفیق to have our fourth and final session of this course which was designed for four weeks in the month of Muharram we have uh, been studying the entire process of journeying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all human beings and then for those who voluntarily want to return and meet him and then we talked about the key is to have Iman and Amal Saleh to have the righteous deeds and Iman and then we said we also are in need of teachers who have traveled this path and Allah says that they are also available these are Alladheena An'amta Alayhim which are introduced in the Qur'an to be al-Nabiyyin, al-Shuhada, al-Siddiqin, al-Salihin. We said that all the prophets, all the messengers, all the imams are guides. All of them are the lanterns of light, Masabihu al-Huda. But there is a special plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salvation through Imam Hussein alayhi salam under of course Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam we explained all that all the prophets all the imams are masabihul huda but this misbahul huda which is Hussein alayhi salam is a special all of them are sufunun najah they are all the arcs of salvation. But this ship, this Safina is different, is a special. So we started in the last session talking about how Imam Hussein alayhi salam helps us in a special way, in a general way, like any other Masum, like any other Hujj of Allah, any other Wali of Allah, he helps us. But there is a special connection that you can make with Imam Hussein alayhi salam to benefit from the speciality of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. You know, sometimes maybe there are doctors that treat, you know, different illnesses, but for one particular disease, there's a doctor who has some speciality. So, what is the speciality of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is discussed tonight, inshallah. Expanded, inshallah, tomorrow when we have the last session on reflections on Ziyarat Ashura. We will expand it there, inshallah. And as you know, inshallah, from next week, we will start two new courses, one on connection between Imam Hussein and Imam Mahdi and one on Ziyara, including Ziyarat Arba'in. So inshallah, uh, I look forward to meeting you and all your friends and people who are interested in learning to meet inshallah next week, next weekend inshallah, bi iznillah. We said our journey towards Allah is the journey from imperfection that is in us 
to the perfection which is in Allah. Absolute perfection. We are finite, He is infinite. So what is the distance between the finite and infinite? The distance is also unlimited, is infinite. So if you want to go from any number to the infinite, how much you lack? You lack infinite. You cannot say, okay, if it is from 1 to infinite, is infinite. But if it is from 10 to infinite, is less than infinite. No, any number to infinite is infinite. I mean, you have to add infinite. And any number divided in infinite is almost zero. Almost zero is epsilon. So, our journey needs lots of provision. And whatever you have is very small. The only people who may think they have enough provision are the people who don't know the journey, who don't know how much we have to go forward to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who know, they say, ah min qillat zat like Amir al -Mumani. He knows the journey. He says, ah min qillat zat So, one general way that Allah helps believers with is to be very generous in his rewarding. And we explain that how Allah multiplies the rewards and minimum is 10 times, it can be much more, you know, we said in Laylatul Ghaz, it's like doing one action in Laylatul Ghaz, like doing the same action for 1,000 months. But among all the generous, gracious ways that Allah rewards, there is something that Allah has additional favor for those who go through that gate. And that is patience, that is sabr. And there is nothing like sabr that can help us. Indeed, even for righteous deeds and refraining from haram, we need sabr. Because you know we have as sabr ala ta'a, as sabr an al ma'asiyah, as sabr ala al musibah. So we have three types of sabr. So even for performing wajibat that you want to be multiplied in reward, you need patience. For refraining from haram, you need patience. But something that is very important is patience with respect to suffering. There is nothing like this that Allah loves and rewards. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Allah rewards the patient without measure. Is it 10 times more? Is it 10,000 times more? Is it 1 million times more? No, it's without measure. It means that the relation is, you know, is starting to be different. The relation for people who do something and gain their reward is like a worker who works for you and you pay him back. If you are very generous, very kind person, if you have favor, if you have father, if someone works for you, you give them so much that they would be surprised. They would be very happy. They would think that, you know, uh, you have uh, out down their expectations but uh, still they are working for you and you are paying them back but if someone becomes muqarrab to you very near to you the relation is different someone who is muqarrab you take care of every need you don't say okay he work has worked for me i multiply the work you say no I take care of everything for him. Whatever he needs, whatever he wants, I will give to him. It's muqarrab. 
in some lectures about muqarrab, I have explained that even muqarrab can intercede for others. People who have haja and they know someone is muqarrab to the king, they say, no, please go and take this from the king for us. Sabirun, those who are patient, Allah loves them so much and he brings them so much nearer to himself that they become muqarrab. And therefore, he gives them without measure. He says, okay, this is the check book. Whatever you want, you can write and cash it. I trust you. And because of your suffering, I know you are no longer attached to dunya. Because one of the things that make you detached from dunya is suffering. Before you have suffering, you very much enjoy your worldly life and worldly belongings, etc. But those who suffer, they lose their superficial you know, attachment to dunya. If they live in dunya, it's because of fulfilling their duties or because of gaining more light. Otherwise, they don't enjoy this you know, worldly life as such. Even every day they wish they die. There's so much suffering in this world. So, those who are patient over their suffering, they are so close to God that Allah says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرَ حساب. Allah rewards them without measure. Okay? So, on the day of judgment, then when we see everything, and we see, for example, the rewards that people receive, like, you know, when they give the results of exams, then I can see what's my result, I can see what my friends have got, or my classmates have my, uh, you know, got. If there's a national exam, you know, people in other cities, other schools, you know, everyone knows the results and they may share with each other. On the Day of Judgment, when we see the results, we will find that the best results are for the people that have been performing their wajibat, refraining from haram, doing mustahabat, of course. They do all these things. But the greatest result is not for those who just do these things. The greatest results are for those believers who had suffering in dunya, who had musibah, and endured that musibah with beautiful patience. They have the highest results. And therefore, among mu'minin, those who are sabir are the highest, and among those who are sober and patient, those who were more patient are highest even. Therefore, whoever has endured greater hardship and showed more beautiful patience gets the best result. So depending on two qualities, how great was your suffering, for example, Someone has lost one child. Someone has lost two children. Everything being equal. Of course, sometimes losing one child is more difficult than two children. Depends on the conditions. But everything being equal, suppose everything is exactly the same. Losing one child is more difficult or losing two children. Losing two children is more difficult or losing your whole family. Sometimes people lose all family in an accident or in war. You know, like now, you know, sometimes uh, in you know Palestine, you know, one fa person loses everyone in the family. Uh, I just saw a few days ago a doctor had lost his wife and child and brother and father and mother, all in one. Uh, bombardment. So, when you have greater musibah, then your position would be higher. 
also the other factor is how you deal with this because maybe everything being equal two people have been afflicted with the same calamity but one of them is on the edge of losing patience the other one is very patient very hopeful very active and even thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his suffering he says Allahumma inni as'aluka sabra shakirin lak in the month of Rajab we say dua after salat I ask the patience of those who are grateful for you or in sajda after ziyarat ashura Allahumma laka alhamdu hamda shakirin laka ala musabih we praise Allah in the way that those who are grateful for their musibah, they praise Him. No one can praise Allah like the people who praise Him when they have musibah and are grateful. You know, if I have no musibah and I praise Allah, it's very easy. I have everything and you know, I praise Allah, that's great. Or if I have musibah and I praise Allah, this is better. But, uh, you know, in my heart, you know, I have issues. Why Allah, you know, has let this happen? But okay, I, I say Alhamdulillah. But the best are those who praise Allah when they are afflicted with musibah and they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one like these people can praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one like ash-shakirina like ala musabihim can praise Allah. These people see beauty not only when they have, you know, money and family and health and job, when everything is okay. They see beauty even when they have musibah. And they see something greater when there is musibah. They see Allah is nearer to them, so they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like being selected for a high position. Why a teacher gives additional homework, you know, uh, assignment, you know, books to read to a student? Because since this student has potentials, you know, says, I have seen this book in my library this is very useful you can read whenever you have time you know I am happy to spend more time with you you know go and summarize this book and I will read and mark for you I want to spend more time with you because I know you are grateful and appreciate I see potential for your growth no one like such a student can praise the teacher those who don't go to the class and don't do anything any homework they fail, they don't praise the teacher. Those who go and learn, they praise, but not like this person who receives extra tasks, extra kindness, extra attention. So, Musiba has the potential of being a reason for failure for losing hope, losing even faith, starting doing bad things. I have musiba, then I go to work, you know, I start, you know, hurting people, you know, if you know people come to me, I don't do their job because I am, you know, in musiba. So this is a negative attitude towards musiba that you suffer and you don't grow and this suffering is like suffocating your soul and therefore you cannot breathe and you cannot, you know, uh, offer any love to other people. But musibah can also purify you, can remove your ego, you remove your attachment to dunya, and free you and liberate you from the things that have fastened and tied up other people. When you have musibah and you see what makes people, some people happy or what makes people sad, you say, you know, 
it's like children they're childish you know you become happy for you know this or you become sad for this it's too little so musiba is a great opportunity for the people that in the right mindset and right attitude and therefore they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that not only he has not abandoned them he has rather selected them and decided to be on their side in the closest possible way with the maximum support with the maximum reward to the extent that the Quran says الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَاءِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَاءِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْتَدُونَ Those that when musiba hits them they say we belong to Allah and we return to Allah and then Allah says, salutations are upon them. Salavatun min rabbihim from the Lord. You know, we say about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi in Surah Al-Ahzab. Allah and the angels send salutations to the messenger of Allah that is amazing also to the people who continuously remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah sends salutation in the same surah al-ahzab Allah says after ya ayyuha alladhina amanu dhkuru Allah dhikran kathira wa sabbahu wa bukratan wa asila he says huwa alladhi yusalli alaykum wa malaikatuhu li yukhrijakum min al-dhulumat ila al-nur Allah says it means that if you do dhikr kathir if you glorify him in the morning and evening he will send you salutations along with his angels so he sends this continuously to the prophet because prophet is always remembering Allah if we also continuously remember Allah he will send salutations to us and takes us from darkness to light Quran says those who are patient with their musibah alayhim salawatun min rabbihim Allah sends salutations to them so it means that they are continuously moving towards light not only their sins are forgiven they are purified and they are receiving more light Warahma. This salawat is, of course, a matter of rahmah because it says, Kana bil mu'minina rahimah in Surah Al-Ahzab. It's one aspect of rahimiyah of Allah is to send salutations, to take you to more light. But it also comes as forgiveness because forgiveness is also a great branch of rahmah. So your sins will be forgiven. Your ability to control your nafs will become more because this is another aspect of Rahmah. إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي There are different things that Rahmah does. In any case, this is for people who are suffering and they remain patient. So, on the Day of Judgment, whoever has gr had greater calamity with greater patience, they will have more light more reward they will be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay before I go to the issue of Imam Hussein there is one hadith that I very much like to share with you about du'as as an example we have lots of hadith about you know losing children about illness etc but there is one hadith <coughs> that I want to share with you because sometimes you make dua and maybe you don't see you know the result and you may lose you know hope etc but 
this shouldn't be the case. Shaykh Kulayni Radwanullah Ta'ala Alayh in Al Kafi Volume 2, page 490, quotes this hadith. Faida Kana Yawmul Qiyamah, Kalallahu Azzabajal, Abdi Dautani Fakhartu Ijabataka. My servant, you called me, but I delayed responding, answering. You asked me for something, but I didn't give you quickly. And because of that delay in answering, either was delayed in dunya or delayed to akhirah, this is your reward. وَدَعُوتَنِي فِي كَذَا وَكَذَا You asked me also for another thing. فَأَخَّرْتُ إِجَابَتَكَ I delayed answering. وَثَوَابُكَ كَذَا وَكَذَا But instead, I give you this reward. قَالَ فَيَتَمَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِ When the believer sees how much Allah gives for the du'as that he didn't get the answer, in dunya or didn't get answered quickly فَيَتَمَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِ تَمَنِّ means you know desire, wish the believer would wish أَنَّهُ لَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لَهُ دَعْوَةٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا مِمَّا يَرَى مِنْ حُسْنِ الثَّوَابِ he wishes that no dua was answered in dunya because of what he sees from the good reward that he gets. He says, you know, I asked for many things. I wish none of them were granted in dunya. Any worldly haja, I wish I was not given because I see how much I get now. Or when they see what Allah gives them for, you know, suffering, for illness, they wish they had suffered more. Right now, the problem is that we don't see what we are getting. Those who are mu'min, those who trust, they accept and they are strong. But if you have doubts, if you have hesitation, then it's difficult. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said in a hadith that I have quoted in the book, spiritual dimensions of mourning for Imam Hussain. I quoted the hadith that Imam Sadiq salam says, Inna subbar wa shi'atuna asbaru minna. We are patient, but our Shia are more patient than us. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that we have more of the quality. It means that we exercise more pressure on ourselves. Ahlul Bayt are patient, but they are more relaxed than us. We are more suffering. Why? Because we are patient over what we know. If we are ill, if we lose someone, we know what Allah is going to give. So it's not very difficult for us. But our Shia are patient while they don't know. They have heard something, they believe in something, but they don't have ilmul yaqeen maybe. Unless those who are very high. So for us it's more difficult because we don't see what is happening. When the whales are removed, then you can see that someone who is suffering is very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surrounded by the angels. Instead of feeling, you know, pity for them, we should feel pity for ourselves. Now, what should we do? Should we volunteer for suffering? No, of course, Islam doesn't 
teach us that you should volunteer for suffering. You should not cause suffering to yourself, number one. I should not say, okay, I don't want to be, you know, uh, healthy because I want to, you know, suffer and then get reward. No, you cannot volunteer for suffering. You cannot cause suffering. Even in dua, don't ask for suffering. You say, you know, I look after my health, but I ask Allah to make me ill. Not that I'm careless, but, you know, I want to experience illness. I, I work, but I prayed for poverty. I treat people with you know, nice manners, but I pray that people you know, reject me and you know, abandon me. No, this is not right. We don't do anything to cause suffering for ourselves or others. This is wrong. But we should be prepared. When it comes, and Allah knows when it comes, we should be prepared for that. We should not be surprised. And we should not let this break us and break our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So, we don't volunteer for suffering, but we are not running away from it. Because if you don't want to suffer, it means that you should not be in this dunya. Or you should be experiencing estedraj. Estedraj means that there are people that Allah leaves them to themselves and they don't suffer. But this is like a student that they tell him, you want to come to school, you don't want to come to school, you want to take exam, you don't want to, it's the same. It means you are rejected. It means you don't matter anymore. In uh, some lectures about suffering, I have referred to a story. Uh, I just want to finish this discussion. So uh, that uh, story is very important. Please you know, listen to those lectures about suffering about the person that Rasulullah was invited by him and something strange happened and he said I have never had any calamity in my life Ma rozeto, and Rasulullah left him if someone has no musibah in his life even if the hen you know lays the egg on the wall and doesn't you know drop and remains on the nail and it's very you know very strange he says, I have no musiba, nothing breaks in our house, for example, no one becomes ill, you know, etc. Rasulullah didn't stay there. So, we don't volunteer for suffering, but we are prepared for that. We, we are, you know, expecting that one day this happens. Sufferings come. Then, you may say, how I can get the best results while I am an ordinary person, I'm an ordinary person. I am not as strong as prophets and messengers and awliya Allah. I cannot, you know, uh, suffer like them. What should I do? This is a speciality of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. In a few minutes I explain this and inshallah tomorrow we document this based on Ziyarat Ashura more. Imam Hussein alayhi salam is a role model, is a teacher, is a guide that does something special. And that is, he says, of course, you know, this is my wording, I am not saying literally he says this. He tells us, Allah has chosen me to go through the greatest calamities. Musibatan ma a'zamaha wa a'zama raziyyataha fil Islam. It's a great musibah, not only for the family of the Prophet at that time. In the whole entire Islam, and not only even in the entire Islam, in the whole world, not only on the earth, even in Samawat, Adhumat Musibatuka, Fis Samawat. So it's the greatest calamity that Allah has chosen Imam Hussein alayhi salam 
for this musibah Allah had trust that Imam Hussein can endure that musibah in the most beautiful way not losing faith not losing hope not losing manners you don't find anywhere Imam Hussein alayhi salam you know gets angry and you know starts you know abusive language etc loses control you know has panic doesn't know what to do Allah chose him for this but Imam Hussein alayhi salam says you can do different things with this you can acknowledge my right this is the minimum any Muslim even any non-Muslim who knows the history the least they can do is to acknowledge that Imam Hussein was treated unjustly he didn't do anything to deserve this treatment indeed no human being even criminals you know should not be treated like this even a criminal child you know family should not be treated like this so he was treated in the way that even the worst criminals should not be treated let alone imam of guidance imam of light like imam hussein alayhi salam and innocent children family etc so the minimum we can do is to acknowledge that he was treated unjustly and to be on the side of mazloom not indifferent or naudhubillah on the side of zalim this is the minimum a little more is to offer our condolences to Imam Hussein and his family and the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and say you know like for example when you, you one of your colleagues your neighbors you know lose someone what do you do you show sympathy you offer condolences you take part in their funerals you try to remove part of their suffering you cannot you know stop the whole suffering you try to be present to be you know offering condolences to remove part of the pressure and it helps and you see people appreciate your condition and people are you know really sad for your musibah it helps it adds to the relation you know to become better maybe many people who do azal for imam hussein they think like this that we offer our condolences to imam hussein imam zaman lady fatima rasulullah and this is great and there is great reward actually if someone is you know mourning for a dear one that they lost if we offer our you know condolences if you are there if you take part in the funeral it's great but there is another thing that we can do and Imam Hussein offers and this is very very special this is generous very generous from Allah through Imam Hussein and that is to say that Imam Hussein has gone through the hardest the most difficult musibah and has showed the best sabr therefore innama yuwaffa sabirun ajrahum bi ghayri hisab is guaranteed for him ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahma is guaranteed for him to be close to allah is guaranteed for him to be in maqam mahmud is guaranteed for him because he has the greatest musibah and he has given the best response okay but he allows us to participate in his musibah without actually bringing all those musibah repeatedly on us you know that okay if I want to join and be in his club, in his, you know, circle, 
I have to lose my children, I have to lose, you know, my you know, brothers, you know, nephews, etc. My family have to be taken as captives so that I can hopefully be with Imam Hussein. Of course, I don't have the same Iman, the same Mahabba, you know, for Allah, etc. So even if the same thing happened to me, I will not be in his position. But at least I can say, you know, I followed your example. I offered everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please let me be in that club, in that circle. No, you don't need. Just participate in his musibah. Take that musibah as your musibah. So we don't need to offer condolences. This is for strangers. We take it as our musibah. We have lost great people. Not that we are offering condolences to the people who have lost you know, their dear ones. We have lost our imam. We have lost his companions, members of Ahlul Bayt. If Imam Zainul Abidin and Lady Zainab were taken as captives, this is my musibah. If it had happened to me, maybe it was easier for me to take it. I'm not watching and you know feeling sad. It brings pain to me. It injures my heart when this happened because it's my musibah. So now I am able to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as'aluhu an yu'tiyani bimusabi bikum afdala ma yu'ti musaban bimusibate inshallah tomorrow we explain more I say to Allah please give me because of my musibah with respect to you musabi bikum I have lost you I have lost my Imam, I have lost Ali Akbar, I have lost Ali Asghar, I have lost Hazrat Abu al I have lost all these beautiful members of you know, the camp of Imam. My lady has been taken as captive, the children have been taken. So this is Musabi Bikum. My Musibah is through you. I, I didn't personally go through that hardship. Maybe even I cannot tolerate that level of hardship. If I see even one in hundreds of uh, you know, those suffering, I die maybe. You went through that hardship, but I join you and then it becomes my musibah. And because this musibah is greatest musibah, then I ask Allah to give me, because of this musibah, to give me the greatest that he ever gives to any person who has suffered. So, Imam Hussein is the one that Allah has made him a great gate for salvation. By he going through the hardship and enabling us to join him to participate in his suffering without necessarily going to do the same things one by one. But we have to join him, we have to follow him. This is different from what you know, some, for example. Uh, Christian friends may say, you know, about Jesus, that Jesus went through suffering, therefore automatically, some of them may say this, automatically, you know, we are forgiven. Even, you know, there's discussion among some of them, you know, whether we need, you know, for example, you know, uh, deeds or not. Some of them say, no, Jesus did already. But we don't say this happens automatically. Participation is very important. Who can participate in Musiba of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? The one that has the fragrance of Hussein, the one that 
in little musibah that he or she is dealing with shows that I am following the example of Hussein, I am following the example of Zainab. I am a student of these great masters. I cannot say I have great masters and I don't need to do anything. Which school works like this? You know, you choose the best masters, the best you know, professors and you do nothing. Say, so, you know, I have registered there, they do everything for me. No. But the good thing is that you register, you do your part, you bring your little bit, but if they accept you as their students, they take you with themselves. You can be with them in dunya and akhirah, you can be in maqam and mahmud, which is for them, you can have firm standpoint in dunya and akhirah, and inshallah this also helps you to be with Imam Mahdi which is inshallah our next course you know about how to connect mourning for Imam Hussain to preparation for Imam Mahdi and inshallah our time is uh, finished. Inshallah, we expand more tomorrow when we reflect on Ziyarat Ashura. I bring, inshallah, these uh, sentences from Ziyarat Ashura to support this. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to follow the beautiful examples of all his prophets and messengers and awliya, and in particular, the beautiful example of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.